At this House Energy Subcommittee hearing, federal regulators tell Congress they have no authority to ban imports of radioactive waste. A U.S. company wants to import 20,000 tons of low-level radioactive waste from Italy for storage in Utah. Members are considering a bill to prevent such imports. This hearing, chaired by Congressman Ed Markey, is an hour and 15 minutes. The subcommittee on energy and the environment will come to order. There are many Italian imports that I would welcome to U.S. soil. Lasagna, great. Harari, absolutely. Prosciutto, delicious. And let's not forget Prada, Versace, and Giorgio Armani. But Italian nuclear waste makes me say, mamma mia. H.R. 515, the Radioactive Import Deterrence Act, was drafted in response to the proposed importation of 20,000 tons of Italian low-level radioactive waste into the United States to be processed in Tennessee and disposed of in Utah. Introduced by Congressman Gordon, Terry, and Matheson, along with many other members of the Energy and Commerce Committee, this bipartisan bill would prevent the importation of low-level radioactive waste into this country. The State of Utah, <clears throat> along with the Northwest Compact, of which Utah is a member, said, no, we won't take the Italian waste. Today, a case is making its way through the courts to determine whether the states and the compacts have the right to say no to other countries' radioactive waste. I have worked on low-level radioactive waste issues for many years. I was on the committee in 1980 when we established the compact system to deal with the issue. And in 1985, when I chaired the subcommittee on energy, long ago and far away, we passed the amendments to the Act uh, to both uh, consent uh, to a number of compacts and to ensure that states without disposal sites would be able to access those critical facilities. Let me state very clearly that when we established the compact system, we did so to ensure that low-level waste in this country would be able to be safely disposed of. In order to encourage new disposal facilities to be established, we allowed the states to enter into compacts to dispose of their waste regionally and we further granted them authority to exclude waste from places outside of their respective compacts. The purpose of the compact system was to empower the states and not the compacts. But today, some argue that the compacts do not have the authority to say no to waste from other countries. To me, from a plain language reading of the statute and the legislative history, this position is obviously incorrect. We did not intend for foreign waste to be allowed special privileges to be disposed of within the compacts, even against the wishes of the compacts and the states. The compact system, the result of a painstaking compromise, has provided access for critical low-level radioactive waste disposal for almost three decades. Today, I am very concerned that the compact system itself is under assault. I disagree with those who argue that this bill is anti-nuclear. In fact, this bill would actually preserve waste disposal capacity for domestic use. Careful stewardship of our new U.S. nuclear waste disposal capacity is more important than ever. In this context, it is important to examine the current state of low-level waste disposal in other countries. Do other countries allow importation and disposal of waste from, say, the United States? The answer, no. Not Germany, not Canada, not Switzerland, and no, not Italy either. Not a one. No other nuclear waste generating country allows low-level waste importation for disposal. In fact, many countries 
with nuclear programs do not even have disposal facilities for their own low-level waste. That includes Italy. If the U.S. remains the one country that allows for the disposal of foreign waste, then nothing stops those other countries from using us as their nuclear dumping ground. If we do not protect the low-level waste compact system, what, what, uh, <clears throat> what are we supposed, to, which were supposed to be the disposal sites for U.S. waste, could be turned into global nuclear waste dumps. We could end up in a position where many states are unable or unwilling to participate in these compacts at all, and companies could have nowhere to go to dispose of their radioactive waste. That would not be a good development for the nuclear industry or for the nation. Now I would like to turn and recognize my good friend, the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Upton, for an opening statement. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and before I begin, I'd like to put into the record uh, two uh, uh, statements. Uh, uh, regular, the, uh, the regular uh, put in the record uh, the nuclear agreements that were signed just this month between the Department of <coughs> Energy Secretary Chu and the Italian Minister for Economic Development. Without objection, so ordered. It, it seems to me that any movement on the bill that we're looking at today would violate the spirit of those agreements, and I would like to submit uh, that court ruling uh, from the case Energy Solutions for Northwest to Interstate <coughs> Compact, and I thank you for allowing that to be in the, the record. As a strong supporter of nuclear power, I hope today's hearing on importing low-level nuclear waste will lead to the dis to discussing the larger issues of long-term storage of spent nuclear fuel or nuclear fuel recycling uh, as a whole. The issue of waste disposal and the new nuclear power plants are, in fact, directly related. I see the bill that we're looking at today is anti-nuclear power. Uh, this bill some would view as a political NIMBY issue. Directly from the NRC's written testimony, quote, the regulatory authorities in both Tennessee and Utah have informed the NRC that the nuclear that the material can safely go to energy solutions facilities in their respective states. The Southeast Compact Commission expressed no objection to this application. The executive branch expressed no objection to the application and provided the NRC with the Italian government's views that the application is consistent with the joint convention obligations." End quote. Also from the NRC, quote, there appears to be ample available disposal capacity for the foreseeable future, particularly at the Energy Solutions Facility in Utah, end quote. So why are we debating the bill? Well, a court has made a ruling, and the appeals court is reviewing the case. Energy Solutions has voluntarily agreed to limit the disposal of foreign generated waste to no more than 5 percent of its license capacity or 10 years, whichever comes first. <coughs> this is just 4.3 acres on a 640-acre site. And the Energy Solutions has offered to make this a legally binding condition of its license. Congress should not be interfering here. Now, we should instead have hearings on building new nuclear power plants, recycling spent fuel, and what happens now that the administration has scrapped Yucca Mountain. While I have great respect for my friends on the other side who introduced this legislation, I am concerned that it will be used by the opponents of nuclear power to delay new plants from coming online, causing further roadblocks to the recycling and safe disposal of spent fuel and low-level waste. The bill is a continuation of the attacks on the nuclear industry. The first attack was on the disposal of spent fuel at Yucca. This bill is attacking the safe disposal of a small amount of low-level waste and is being used by those who would like to stop nuclear energy to attack the disposal of domestic generated depleted, depleted uranium, or DU. NRC has stated that the disposal of DU is safe. If we can't dispose of DU, then we can't enrich uranium for fuel. And if we don't have the fuel, then we're unable to power the source of 70 percent of our nation's zero emission electricity generation. <coughs> Sponsors of the bill may not believe that it's anti-nuclear, but the anti-nuclear groups attempt to stop nuclear energy by attacking the waste, not the generation. Despite what the proponents of the legislation may claim, this isn't just about importing waste from Italy. What happens to be identical to the domestic waste safely dis being processed and disposed of today? This is the camel's nose under the tent, and that is 
shutting down all of our domestic processing and disposal capabilities and eventually mothballing all of our zero emissions nuclear power plants. Low level radioactive material from nearly 104 domestic nuclear sites is sent to the Bear Creek facility for processing and onto the Clive facility in Utah for safe disposal. We cannot compete on a global scale if we can shut down our domestic facilities. Members of this very subcommittee represent 18 different states that send waste to be processed and disposed of by energy solutions at their facilities. I have two nuclear power plants in my district, literally miles from my doorstep, that send their low-level nuclear waste across state lines for processing and disposal. These services are essential to the success of nuclear power. Now, I know that there are some concerns about importing Italian waste to the Clive, Utah site and how it will impact the compact system. I don't believe that it will. The compact system remains unaffected. The court has already unequivocally ruled on the issue, and I expect that the appeals court will affirm the ruling. We should let the process move forward. The judge's ruling in Energy Solutions versus Northwest stated that the Clive facility is not a regional disposal facility and not part of the Northwest Compact. Two quotes are important. Under the 1980 Act, Northwest would have no authority to exclude out-of-region waste from Clive facility. And second quote, the Clive facility is not a regional disposal facility as defined by the 85 Act. It is imperative that clean, safe nuclear power is at the forefront as we seek to solidify our nation's energy supply and foster a new era of energy independence and reduced emissions. And as applications for nearly 30 new nuclear plants are expected over the next couple of years, we are on our way to fulfilling our commitment to safe, clean nuclear power. Not only will our environment be, be better off for it, so will our national security will also uh, be bolstered. Millions of households are powered by clean, zero emission nuclear power, and our nation's economy will be powered by nuclear as well. This is the right course and we'll be better for it. Now, I yield back uh, my time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from uh, Utah, Mr. Mathis. Well, thank you, Chairman Markey, for holding this hearing. As the committee knows, I've been working on this bipartisan legislation with my friends Bart Gordon of Tennessee and Lee Terry of Nebraska for the past two years. The subcommittee held a similar legislative hearing last year, and it was clear to those of us who attended that hearing that the policy for low-level radioactive waste in this country, as created by the federal government in the legislation of 1980 and 1985, has some gaps, and there's some questions, and Congress ought to relook at this policy, and that's why we're here today. I would say that uh, it's hard to see why the U.S. would ever want to import radioactive waste from other countries. Simply put, um, we have very few locations in this country where this waste can go. Uh, given the fact, and I agree with Mr. Upton, we are facing a future with an additional amount of nuclear power in this country, and I support the creation of new nuclear power plants. It seems to me, as we focus on carbon-free energy sources, and nuclear power seems to grow in the U.S. over the next few years, that we want to preserve the U.S. capacity for low-level radioactive waste. Some have said this is an anti-nuclear bill, and nothing could be further from the truth. This is a pro-domestic nuclear power bill. I challenge anyone to show me in this legislation what's going to inhibit the development of domestic nuclear power. So I want to get that on the record right away in this opening statement, because that's just in the case. Now, as we said, the compact system which oversees uh, the, uh, the, the low level variety of waste, Utah is part of what's called the Northwest Compact. The compact says that while the Clive facility is authorized to take waste from outside the compact sites, States, the compact also said it had never considered or reviewed the issue of adopting an arrangement that would provide low level radioactive waste generated in foreign countries access to the region for disposal at the Energy Solutions Facility in Clive, Utah. Um, as illustrated in the testimony of Mr. Slosky from the Rocky Mountain Compact, when Energy Solutions applied to the NRC for an import license for waste from Canada, because we've had some waste come into this country, some small amounts in the past. It was listed as only need to be processed at the Bear Creek facility. In fact, the waste was processed, then it was redesignated as U.S. waste and was ultimately stored in Utah without the knowledge of the Northwest Compact or without the knowledge of the state of Utah. So we can talk about some foreign waste that's come in and stayed here. The compact and the state didn't even know it happened. 
And those were all pretty small amounts, and now we're talking about a lot greater volume of radioactive waste. You'll hear some discussion during the hearing today about do we have enough capacity in this country. You'll hear reference to a GAO study from 2004. We talked about this in the hearing last year. They took one data point and projected it out from there. It happened to be a low year. You know, when I was a first year MBA student, a professor tricked all of us with a case where he had us take some data and we projected out. Then he pointed out the other data and we all learned a good lesson. The GAO made that same first year MBA mistake. I hope we don't when we look at this, what, this, uh, this amount of capacity we've got. And again, I don't see a lot of other states lining up to create new sites to take this waste. Um, in last year's hearing, Energy Solutions just randomly came to the agreement to self-limit foreign waste to storage capacity of 5 percent. But at the same time, in the testimony from the companies today, they're suggesting they want to increase the license capacity of its site when just two years ago they voluntarily said to our governor, we won't apply for an application to increase our site. So these voluntary commitments may not have a lot of meaning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I know my time has expired. I have a uh, written statement I'd like to submit for the record, and I do thank you for the hearing. Look forward to the questions. Great. Uh, I, we thank the uh, gentleman very much. His time has expired. And perhaps he could give us the name of that professor that we could send over to the Congressional Budget Office so that uh, they could have his insight as to how long-term projections are made. Uh, by unanimous consent, uh, I would request that uh, the gentleman from Tennessee, who is co-sponsor of the legislation with Mr. Matheson, uh, Mr. Gordon, be allowed to participate in this hearing and to be recognized for making an opening statement uh, without objection. So ordered, uh, the gentleman is recognized for that purpose. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for that uh, request, and also thank you for having this hearing today. <clears throat> when the Nuclear Power Waste Policy Act and the low level waste policy amendments were passed in the 1980s, the United States was facing a critical problem. Where are we going to put low level radioactive waste generated by our own nuclear power plants? We established a compact system under which the states in each compact would be responsible for establishing disposal sites and taking care of their own waste. As the legislative history clearly shows, a witness from the NRC testified in a hearing before this subcommittee last year, no one anticipated that other countries would try to dump their radioactive waste in the United States. The NRC stated when it drafted regulations allowing the importation of nuclear waste that it did not anticipate, and I quote, appreciable U.S. import or export traffic in low-level radioactive waste. And that was true for more than a decade until Energy Solutions applied for the NRC license in 2007 to import 20,000 tons of low-level radioactive waste from Italy for treatment in Tennessee and disposal in the site in Utah. Italy does not have a disposal site, nor has it been successful in obtaining public approval for a future site. And Italy is not the only country that doesn't have a waste site or enough capacity for its waste. Britain is running out of room and looking for places to put its waste. Germany, Canada, Belgium, Switzerland, Mexico, and Denmark don't have sites either. If we were to, to if, if I were a public official in Italy or Britain, I would jump at the chance to send my low-level low waste to the United States and be rid of the responsibility. But no one can claim that this is the best interest of the United States to take on decades of responsibility for another country's nuclear waste and also taking away the incentive for those countries to do the responsible thing by providing storage for their own waste. And let me make it clear, this plan is about the best interest, uh, excuse me, uh, and so we should ask why the United States needs uh, Italy's waste, which has been a safe storage site, has been uh, safely stored on site for over 20 years and can safely be stored for another 20 years or more or the waste of any other country when Energy Solution plans overseas disposal sites. As it now stands, the NRC is powerless to prevent foreign import of waste even as space for our domestic waste dwindles. It is clear that only a legislative prohibition will stop the wholesale importation of foreign nuclear waste into the United States. The RED Act provides the prohibition while allowing the President to make exceptions if it is in the national interest. The United States is the only country in the world that allows imports and disposals of low-level radioactive waste from other countries. The fact is we have limited space for this kind of waste and it should be reserved for domestic industries that generate it, medical facilities, universities, research labs, and utilities. 
36 states have no other alternative but to ship their waste uh, to, um, uh, to Utah. Uh, so Michigan, Texas, and, and, and 34 other states have no other place. That is what the RID Act will do. By banning the importation of radioactive waste for disposal, we also send the world the right message. If you're going to produce low-level radioactive waste, you're going to have to build the necessary facilities to dispose of it. And finally, in, in all due respect to my friend from Michigan, uh, this is not an anti-nuclear uh, waste or, uh, uh, bill by any means. It is a pro-domestic nuclear industry. Michigan, as you pointed out, uh, those two facilities near you, if, if the facility in Utah is, uh, is, it runs out of capacity, there will be no place for them to send their waste. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great. We thank the gentleman. The gentleman's uh, time has expired. We'll now turn to our witnesses. <clears throat> our first witness is uh, Margaret Doan, the Director of the Office of International Programs at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, this office provides overall coordination for the NRC's international activities. Uh, Ms. Uh, Doan, whenever you're ready, please begin. Can you turn on your microphone, please, and move it in a little bit closer. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee. Uh, my focus, uh, my office is responsible for reviewing import and export license applications and issuing licenses pursuant to the NRC's import and export licensing regulations. My focus today will be on the NRC's regulatory framework for licensing the import of low-level radioactive waste. I'd like to thank you for providing the NRC with the opportunity today to discuss our import licensing process. As requested, we provide a prepared testimony for the record that describes in detail NRC's regulatory framework for licensing the import of low-level radioactive waste. At this time, I will highlight key elements of that testimony. The NRC reviews import and export license applications against the criteria defined in its regulations. Specifically, the NRC bases its licensing actions on th the following three criteria. One, the proposed import will not be inimical to common defense and security. The import will not pose an unreasonable, constitute an unreasonable risk to public health and safety, and an appropriate facility has agreed to accept the waste for management and disposal. The NRC has exclusive jurisdiction within the United States for granting or denying licenses to import foreign red radioactive waste. The NRC determines whether to issue and import license for radioactive waste based on its own health and safety and common defense and security evaluation. The NRC's evaluation is formed after consulting with the executive branch through the Department of State, the applicable host state, and the applicable low-level radioactive waste compact and consideration of public comments. The NRC consults with the applicable host state regulatory officials for their health and safety views on the proposed import and to confirm that the proposed import of radioactive waste is consistent with the state-issued possession license for the disposal facility. Likewise, the NRC consults with the applicable low-level radioactive waste compact commission to determine whether the compact will accept out-of-compact waste for disposal in a regional facility. To ensure that no radioactive waste imported into the United States becomes orphaned waste, the NRC will not grant an import license for waste intended for disposal unless it is clear from these consultations that the waste will be accepted at an applicable host agreement state and, where applicable, the low-level radioactive waste compact. As requested by the subcommittee, I would like to turn to questions regarding disposal capacity for low-level waste in the United States. In the short term, the NRC has not identified any capacity issues with regard to Class A disposal at Energy Solutions Clive, Utah facility. The agency as a regulator would have the authority to address future domestic disposal capacity issues if there were a public health and safety or common defense and security concern. There do not appear to be any con such concerns about capacity for disposal of Class A material, which has been the classification for all waste import cases today. In reviewing import licensing applications, the NRC reviews, our review focuses on whether there is an appropriate facility that has agreed to accept the waste for management or disposal. In making its determination, we obtain the views of the affected low-level waste compact states in the executive branch. The pure policy question of whether, as a general matter, foreign waste should be permitted to take up space in U.S. disposal facilities would necessarily involve interests that are beyond the traditional role of a regulator to consider. 
These would include foreign and interstate commerce, entrepreneurial interests, the state's concerns and expectations under the low-level Radioactive Waste Policy Act. However, the NRC would be pleased to share its views on the effect of the proposed H.R. 515 on import and export licensing and contribute its technical expertise to those decision makers better situated to decide the questions the draft legislation involves. In conclusion, the NRC's role in evaluating a low-level waste import application is a regulatory one, limited to ensuring that the proposed import can be accomplished safely and securely and in accordance with all applicable legal requirements. Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee, this concludes my statement, and I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Ms. Stone, very much. Our second witness is Leonard uh, Slosky, the Executive Director of the Rocky Mountain Low-Level Radioactive Waste Board. This board is responsible for implementing the Rocky Mountain Low-Level Radioactive Waste Compact. Uh, Mr. Slosky, welcome. Whenever you're ready, please begin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you move that microphone in a little closer and make sure it's on? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to present um, our views with you today. On a personal note, I'd like to um, note that it's nice to be back here. As I chaired, I appeared before the Chairman's Subcommittee in 1985 when the compacts were first going through Congress. So I have been rejuvenated since then and am glad to return. Um, while I'm officially representing the Rocky Mountain Board, I've discussed these issues with the Northwest Compact. Were you a witness on this subject at that time? I'm afraid so. Yes. Unbelievable. So you and I, we're... We go way back. We go way back. Wow. Yeah. I remember those hearings. Yeah, that won't well, count against my time. <laughs> no, it will not count. Um, while I'm officially representing the Rocky Mountain Compact today, I've discussed these issues with the Northwest Compact and they are in agreement with this testimony. The primary message that I would like to leave with you is the importance of the compact's exclusionary authority. That is, the authority of the compacts to control what waste can be brought into and taken out of a compact. In 1979, the governors of the three states with low-level waste disposal facilities stated that they don't, were, were no longer willing to burden the, carry the entire burden of disposing of the nation's low-level waste. To resolve this crisis and to keep the existing facilities open, the states proposed to Congress that they re be responsible for low-level waste within their regions in exchange for the authority to exclude waste from outside their regions. As you know, this led to the passage of the 1980 Act. The 1985 Federal Act embodied a compromise that allowed Congress to consent to the original seven compacts in return for the three cited states and compacts agreeing to keep their disposal facilities open for another seven years. The consent of Congress was necessary for the compacts authorities over interstate commerce to be effective. One of the primary purposes of the 1980 and 85 acts was to achieve greater equity in low level waste disposal. When compacts were drafted and during congressional consent, there was no expectation that foreign low-level waste would be disposed of in these sites. However, 10 compacts have been enacted as federal law and all contain exclusionary authority over outer region waste. It is inconceivable to me that Congress intended to authorize the compacts to exclude waste from states outside their regions, but not from foreign nations. It is the exclusionary authority of the compacts that allows the existing disposal facilities to continue to operate and enables new facilities such as the WCS facility in Texas, which has recently been licensed and will soon begin construction to come about. As no state is willing to host a disposal facility unless it has authority through a compact to ensure that it does not become the dumping ground for the nation's or the world's low-level waste. The states and compacts do not object to foreign waste being imported for treatment or recycling, so long as the resulting waste has a viable disposal pathway and is not re-attributed as domestic waste. However, the threat of foreign waste disposal places the entire compact system 
and the existing and planned low-level waste disposal sites in jeopardy. Utah would not have licensed the Clyde facility if it did not believe that it had the ability through the compact to control out-of-region waste. Under the Northwest Compact, no facility located in a member state may accept out-of-region waste without prior approval of an arrangement by the Compact Committee. The Compact Committee adopted a clarifying resolution that the existing arrangement does not provide access for foreign waste, but does provide access for waste from throughout the United States. This is not a NIMBY issue. It is a matter of national importance. As stated by Utah in a hearing last year on similar legislation, the state of Utah has done its fair share and more and disposing of most of the nation's low-level waste. In terms of the, the litigation that is ongoing, the, the status has been briefly reported. I would uh, note that the amicus briefs in support of the appellant's position um, have been filed and that this, this extraordinary coalition of compacts and states is due to the far-reaching implications of the district court decision. While the litigation began over the import of Italian waste, the decision is much broader and will affect every low-level waste compact. If the district court's decision stands, the compact system could be destroyed because of a very narrow interpretation of compact authority. It is interesting to note that eight of the ten low-level waste compacts in the nation are either defendants or um, amici in this litigation, in addition to the Council of State Governments and the State of New Mexico. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Who did you, who did you represent in 1985, Mr. Sosky? I represented the Rocky Mountain Compact also. Rocky Mountain Compact. Unbelievable. Um, our third witness is uh, Val Christensen. He is the president of Energy Solutions, the, a nuclear services company headquartered in Salt Lake City, Utah. Mr. Christensen, welcome. Please begin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, I'm grateful for the opportunity to appear today and provide testimony on this uh, very important issue. As has been mentioned, uh, Energy Solutions is headquartered in Salt Lake City, Utah. We are a world leader in environmental cleanup and providing a wide range of technical support services to the nuclear industry. We also provide critical non-proliferation services under the Global Threat Reduction Initiative. I'd like to address some of the concerns about safety because that's the underlying concern when we talk about importing uh, nuclear waste. We've been safely disposing of Class A low-level nuclear materials from within the United States and from abroad internationally for over nine years. These materials include shoe covers, lab coats, cleaning cloths, paper towels, and other kinds of materials that are used in areas where radioactive materials are present. Class A low-level radioactive waste contains the lowest concentration of radiation in the low-level waste classification scheme. To put it in perspective, exit signs and uh, smoke detectors that you find in your home have radioactive sources that are more radioactive than the Class A designation and are not allowed to be disposed of in our Clive facility. Both the, the state and federal regulators have concluded that the processing and disposal of Class A low-level radioactive waste poses no health or safety issues. It's important to note uh, for uh, uh, Congressman Gordon from Tennessee that uh, no internationally generated waste would ever be disposed of or orphaned in Tennessee. We have never processed international material in Tennessee that was non-conforming and had to be returned to the generating country. We and others have been, as I mentioned, have been importing foreign waste for many years from countries such as Germany, the UK, Mexico, Canada, and Taiwan. And I would note that the NRC has issued import licenses that specifically identify the Northwest Compact disposal site in Richland, Washington as the final resting place for some of that international waste. 
and I can provide examples to you uh, off the record. There really is no domestic disposal capacity issue in the United States. Reference was made to the GAO testimony. The GAO noted that uh, Class A waste volumes have declined by two-thirds, principally because the DOE has completed several large cleanup projects. This wasn't a one-year uh, event. The trends are going down. Both commercial and federal disposal volumes are decreasing. Additionally, since uh, May of 2008, a license was issued for the construction of another waste disposal site in Texas. Although the GAO and the NRC have testified that uh, there is dom a domestic capacity issue with respect to Class B and Class C waste, they've concluded that there is no Class A waste disposal capacity issue. And we need to remember that the Clive facility is licensed to take only Class A waste. The final uh, point I wish to make with respect to the capacity issue is that the 5 percent volunteer license amendment that we, we have uh, presented publicly relates to 150 million cubic feet of remaining licensed capacity. And uh, we've also made the 10-year uh, limit publicly uh, a part of our license uh, amendment. Now, with respect to the compact litigation, the court's ruling is very narrow. It simply concluded that Cl the Clive facility, which was never uh, constructed or intended to be a compact disposal facility out outside of the compact scheme, but the court emphasized that compacts still have the authority to restrict waste coming domestically or internationally into their compact facility. The Clive facility is simply not a, a compact facility. It's privately owned and there are no other facilities like it. And so the precedent that people are concerned about from the court's ruling simply has no application on any other facility. All compact facilities, according to the judge's ruling, continue to be able to exclude waste and control waste within their compact system. Again, there's ample dispo disposal capacity. The court's ruling does not interfere with the compact system. It does not uh, turn America into a dumping ground. It's hard to conceive that 4.3 acres in one location would turn the United States into the dumping ground of the world. Uh, it also, we're also concerned that, uh, that uh, this bill would violate the spirit of the administration's policy of nuclear cooperation as evidenced by the U.S.-Italian joint declaration referred to earlier, which was signed by Secretary Chu and his Italian counterpart, which advances cooperation in the nuclear sector, including advanced waste treatment and disposal technologies. We believe the proposed legislation would prevent American companies from playing an international role in the, in the global nuclear industry largely based on perceptions rather than on facts and sound science. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christensen, very much. Now we'll turn to questions from the uh, subcommittee. Uh, Mr. Slosky, uh, you're an expert on the compact system. You've spent your life working on it. Um, are you concerned that if Utah and the Northwest Compact are forced to take the Italian waste that the compact system itself would be damaged? I am very much so. Can you turn on your microphone, please? Yes, I am very much so concerned. Could this lead to other states refusing to open new low-level waste disposal sites? Yes, I believe it could. Uh, the ruling from the court, and let me first uh, give you a disclaimer. I am not an attorney, and since it's ongoing litigation, um, I'm not going to discuss the merits of the case, but I'm happy to discuss um, its implications. And the, the implication is that um, there could be a very detrimental <coughs> effect on the development of any new facilities in the U.S. because it will be uncertain under this ruling whether the compacts in which those facilities would be located would have exclusionary authority or not. So this could send us back to 1980 before we passed the legislation out of this committee. Yes, sir. And let me turn to you, uh, 
Ms. Stone. Um, has the NRC ever denied an import application for low-level waste because the importation would pose an unreasonable risk to the common defense and security? No, I don't believe we've ever denied an application because of common defense and security concerns. You were listing the reasons that you could reject, so you've never rejected? We have not, no. Okay. Not uh, has the NRC ever denied an import application for low-level waste because it would pose an unreasonable risk to the public health and safety? We've had, yes, we've had, um, we've returned without action applications that have come in where they haven't been able to satisfy us that public health and safety would be protected. And uh, were any, were, were those applications ultimately modified that made them acceptable or was it, was it just a flat out rejection? Some were modified, but others were no. They didn't submit them again. We raised a lot of questions and they weren't resubmitted. Um, so, but for how many applications have been denied over the years? Uh, we have, we uh, returned without action, I'd say maybe, um, maybe five or so. Mm -hmm. there, there might be more, but offhand, that's what I would say. And how many actual denials have you ever issued? Uh, I don't believe we've actually denied them, because in those cases, that's the, that's the same effect. The return that, without, that is what? The return without action is this, has the same effect. We, re, we return them with what they would have to do to, to put them back in, and they aren't returned. And so if they can't meet the uh, request that we had, we return them without action, so it has the exact same effect as a denial. Mm -hmm. um, so it's rarely used, though. The re return without yeah. action is rarely used. Mm -hmm. um, it's get, it's, it is more rare now. It, it, it was in the beginning when we were for, after the 1995 rule where they had to, where we um, required licenses, it was more common. It's getting less common as people start to understand the regulations. They don't come in where they know they're not going to meet them. So if the regional compacts do not have the ability to say no, um, and the NRC very rarely says no, um, then it's unlikely that there would be many instances where low-level nuclear waste would be blocked from coming into our country. The um, regional compacts can say no over the facilities that they have control. And in fact, um, in a case, one of the first cases that we had, the applicant was unable to show that the um, South, that Barnwell would accept the waste. And that was the reason for the return without action. Now, let me go over to you, Ms. Sosky. Do you agree with her that it will have no impact on the compact states? No, I, I do not agree with that. Could you expand on your answer, please? Well, I think in looking at the NRC regs, it's unclear to me what the role is of the states and compacts in the NRC decision making. It has a consultation provision, but it's not explicit in the regulations if the states and compacts, as in this case, comment back that the waste is not acceptable, what the NRC does with that consultative information. Okay, great. Uh, the Chair's time has expired. The gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Upton, is recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, the question that, I, that quickly comes to mind is, how, Mr. Slosky, how, how does this, the uh, storage of only four acres, in this ca particular case, the Clive, Utah, is what, 640 acres? Is that right, Mr. Christian? Yes, sir. How does, how does an agreement to limit it to only 4.3 acres undermine the compacts in, uh, across the rest of the country? Well, knowing, knowing that that's it, the stop sign's up. They put it in the amendment. The courts have said it's okay up to, up to this point and waiting for an appeal, which See what happens. The reason it has large implications is the court's ruling goes well beyond four acres. The court's ruling undermines the fundamental authority of compacts. But this is a private, I mean, this is a, a private facility, right? Mr. Christensen, you want to comment on that? The, as I mentioned, the court's ruling is narrow. There aren't any other facilities in the United States like the Clive facility, and the court went on to emphasize that compacts retain their authority under the, uh, the low-level radioactive waste policy act.
to exclude waste from the compact facilities and to control the waste within the compact borders. Can I respond? Sure. Um, I would just point out that the WCS facility in Texas that recently received a license and is about to begin construction is also a privately owned and privately operated low-level waste site, but is intended to serve the Texas Compact. But under the Court's ruling that the exclusionary authority of the Texas Compact over that facility could also be brought into question. Mr. Christensen, do you want to respond? Then yeah, so I I am a lawyer by, uh, I'm by not training, so. <laughs> and so I, I don't want to get into too much technicality on this, but the WCS facility is a compact facility and would be controlled by the compact board in the state of Texas. And uh, the, the court ruling would have no impact whatsoever on the Texas compact authority over the WCS facility. There, there is no other facility like the Clive facility, which is outside of the compact system. Yeah, uh, th thank you. Uh, Ms. Don, how many waste import licenses has the NRC actually granted? over the years? Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. And you've granted the import license to Energy Solutions, right? Other import licenses, yes. And are they currently importing waste pursuant to that license? I mean, are there any, I mean, are we aware of any violations? Is there any? No. No, we're not aware of any violations. And, uh, I mean, there's no, um, Mr. Christensen, does the Clive facility have enough capacity to meet the disposal requirements of the domestic nuclear industry uh, and other customers? We do. We have uh, remaining about 140 million cubic feet, which for our operational purposes is adequate and projected to go out to about 30 years. And that includes using 5% or five percent of that capacity for international waste. And we, we certainly have, we have other uh, c capacity that it's not yet licensed that is accessible through the licensing process if capacity ever became a national issue. And there's no real difference, right, between class, uh, class A waste between different countries, right? It's, it's in essence the, the same. No, sir, there isn't. Uh, the NRC has concluded that there is no difference between class A low-level waste coming from domestic sources or from international sources. And, and Mr. Slowski, at least in your opinion, there's, we haven't seen any violations, right, in the, at the Clive facility? I mean, are you aware of any trouble that's been there at all? Well, there are on occasion regulatory violations that are assessed against the company by the state of Utah. But for the most part, the facility is in compliance with the agreement state regulations. Uh, but however, that's not the issue. The, the issue is a policy issue of whether it is appropriate to manage foreign nations' waste in this country. We, we know we have the technical capability. We know the disposal facilities can accept the waste. Um, from a technical standpoint, the issue is really a policy issue. But, uh, okay, I, I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Matheson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if there was ever a sighting of a violation, but when waste went to Bear Creek and then went to the Utah facility and neither the state of Utah nor the Northwest Compact were ever made aware of it, I think that was a violation, just for what that's worth. Could, could Mr. I respond Mr. to that? No, not, I got only five minutes and I'm going to get to my questions. Mr. Slosky, when when the compact system was being drafted and created in the 1980s, was there any discussion of foreign waste importation and storage at low-level radioactive waste facilities? I can recall none other than discussions with the Department of Defense in terms of returning to the U.S. U.S. origin materials the Department of Defense utilized abroad. And I would note that the, dra the legislation as drafted allows for foreign uh, waste created at U.S. Depart Department of Defense facilities overseas to return to this country. It has an exemption for that type of waste. Was there any expectation that foreign waste is considered out of region waste during these discussions? We always considered foreign waste to be out of region, yes. Mr. Skoski, in your testimony, you said foreign waste disposal is one of the most serious threats to the compacts in their 25-year history. Can you explain that statement? Yes. Um, the whole history of the compact system going back to 1980 and really to 1979 
was the state's desire to be able to control the flow of waste to their sites. So if you look at South Carolina, Washington State, um, Nevada at the time we had a disposal site there and, and now Utah and Texas, the issue is being able to control the waste that goes to those sites. And if we lose control of foreign waste going to those sites, then the system is undermined and it is very likely that all of those sites in time will close to all generators. We've, we've heard about um, the, the issue of the nuclear cooperation agreement with Italy. What would happen if we start importing waste from all the countries we have nuclear cooperation agreements with? We have them, you know, we have agreements with India, Japan, United Arab Emirates, Jordan, most of Europe, China. Are we, you know, it seems to me that there is a significant volume out there if you start expanding it to all those states. Is that a threat to the compact system? I believe it is. Since the compact system was intended to allow states to self-manage low-level radioactive waste, do you think any state or compact would have authorized the creation of a new low-level radioactive waste site if the state thought it did not have the authority to regulate the site? No, they would not. In fact, Utah has stated that they would not have licensed Clive for low-level waste if they did not believe they had the authority through the compact to control the flow of all out-of-region waste, including foreign waste. Um, Mr. Slosky, in um, Energy Solutions has told us that as a result of the district court ruling in Utah earlier this year, the company is not regulated by the Northwest Compact because it is because it is not a regional disposal facility. In your testimony, you said the district court completely disregarded explicit language in the Northwest Compact that was approved by Congress as federal law. Can you expand on this point? Yes, the Northwest Compact does not use the term regional facility. The Northwest Compact bars any facility in any of their member states from receiving low-level waste without the approval of the compact. That language was disregarded and the court reverted to the much more narrow definition of regional disposal facility. Mr. Shossi, two years ago, the Utah State Legislature moved to enact legislation they were working on enacting legislation that would have removed local government, legislative, and gubernatorial approval for expansion of the Clive site. Uh, as was noted in the September 2007 low-level radioactive waste management report, former Governor Huntsman threatened to notify the Northwest Compact to limit the volume of waste that can be disposed to the current levels. In response, Governor Huntsman and Energy Solutions reached agreement that the company would withdraw its application for additional disposal capacity and the governor agreed to refrain from seeking to limit disposal capacity at the facility. Um, two years later, it now seems, based on this court ruling, that Energy Solutions does not believe it is under the authority of the compact system. So what are your thoughts about this? Well, this has been a little bit of a surprise because for, I believe, 15 or 17 years, um, Energy Solutions has been operating under the compact system, appearing to the, at the compact uh, meetings, submitting reports, coming to the committee and requesting approval to accept waste. And then suddenly when this dispute arouse, arose, uh, Energy Solutions took the position that they're not actually regulated by the compact. Is it, is it, uh, last question, Mr. Chairman, because I'm my time's running. Is, it, is, is this a question of that they're saying the, North, the Northwest Compact has the authority to regulate the disposal capacity, but not the material which is disposed there? Is there a distinction they're making in that sense? Or? Well, th there's a distinction between what the agreement state, the state of Utah regulates, and what the compact regulates. The state of Utah regulates the health and safety and capacity of the site. The Northwest Compact regulates where waste can come from to the site. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My time's expired. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Gordon, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Christensen, going back to your uh, statement, uh, you started off by saying that the uh, major issue here was safety, yet I'll point out that no one here has raised safety as an issue. Uh, but one major issue, though, is the capacity. And we might have different arguments about how long you can, it can be there, but where there can be no argument that capacity is finite. Um, now, and also in your testimony, uh, you said that allowing the Italian waste to be uh, dumped in the U.S. would violate the spirit 
of the U.S.-Italian Joint Declaration Concerning Industrial and Commercial Cooperation in the Nuclear Energy uh, Section. <coughs> let, let me point out that the United States has a similar agreement with 40 other states. And so by inference, that would be that then you're saying that we would break our agreement in the spirit with 40 other or 39 other countries. Uh, so to me, uh, that does two things. One, open up a big door for those countries to ship their radioactive waste here. And secondly, uh, it sends a message to them that they don't have to be responsible, that they, don't, they can build whatever they want and not uh, look at taking care of it. So, but here, so here are my questions for you. Um, does Energy Solutions have an enforceable contract with the Italians to dispose of the waste or suffer damages regardless of whether it gets a license from the NRC? No. Hmm. You say you're a lawyer, right? I am. And so do, and what, and what, are you a lawyer for the company? I was formerly general counsel of the company, currently president of the company. Okay. So were you general counsel, um, let's see, in June, on June 19th? Yes. No, excuse me. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Well, let me just try to, you know, get, understand this. In a formal submission to the NRC on June the 19th, uh, 2009, in response to the NRC's May 20th, uh, 2009 order, uh, 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 or for complaint on how to, com excuse me, the May 20th, 2009 order for um, comment on how to proceed on your license application, Energy Solutions stated, and I assume that's what you wrote, Energy Solutions stated that a delay in issuing this uh, license, and I quote, would cause Energy Solutions substantial economic harm because it is unable to perform work under its contracts for waste without requested license. Now, can you sort of help me on this? Well, your, early, your earlier question was whether we would be exposed to damages for nope, breach of nope, contract. Nope, nope, nope. My question was very specific. We, we my don't. Question, my question was this. Does Energy Solutions have an enforceable contract with the, with the Italians to dispose of its waste or suffer damages regardless of whether it gets a license from the NRC? That was my question. Yeah, I and heard your answer damages. was, as I recall, yeah. no. That's correct. We don't have, we don't have a contract uh, concluded with the Italian uh, government or the, the, the Italian uh, sources that would expose us to damages if it uh, weren't fulfilled. Okay, then why did you write uh, to the NRC uh, that if they did not, if you did not get that license, you would, and I quote, would cause Energy Solutions substantial economic harm because it's unable to perform uh, under its contract for the waste without the requested license, page 8 on June 19, 2009, submission to the NRC? Well, I'd have to go back and look at it, but the, uh, we would suffer economic harm by not being able to fulfill contracts that we're in the process of negotiating. We don't have signed final contracts. With okay, okay, so again, so just help me here, help me here. This is what you wrote to the NRC, a federal agency, uh, that if you did not get the license, you would cause Energy Solutions substantial economic harm because it is unable to perform work under its contracts for this waste without the requested license. That's right. So did you have any contracts on, on June the 19th? We didn't have any final binding contracts. Well, then why would, you, why would you tell a federal agency? The lady, that, you know, this is what he wrote to you. Why would you Be write to this lady uh, and if, and, 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 and in the federal capacity that you did have contracts? Because contract negoti negotiations are underway and the contacts, contracts we're referring to are the potential contracts with the Italian government, which we would not be able to secure or perform without the license. Okay, well, I'll let that go, but NRC may not. Um, now, Mr. Slonsky, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, is it true that when Energy Solutions said they were going to bring this uh, uh, Italian waste into uh, uh, Hunt, uh, into uh, uh, Utah that the governor said no, and then Energy Solutions sued the state? Actually, what transpired is that the governor of Utah instructed his member on the Northwest Compact to vote against uh, bringing the waste okay. in. And since Utah is the host state, they have a 
essentially a veto power over the compact's agreement to bring any waste in. And so Energy Solutions sued them to be able to do this? Yes, actually shortly before the meeting of the Northwest <coughs> Compact, Energy Solutions uh, filed suit in okay. federal district court. And Ms. Stone, just to, if I could, if, is it proper to summarize your testimony or portions of your testimony by saying that um, it really is a policy issue uh, 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 whether radioactive waste should be brought in this country or not. This is not an NRC. You don't have the authority other than the, on the safety issues to say whether it can come in or not. So this really has to, if we're going to allow the United States uh, to be the only country in the world that will accept radioactive waste from other nations, then this is a, a, a policy decision that has to be made uh, by, the, by the Congress. That's right. Thank you. Great. Well, that uh, completes the first round of uh, questions from the subcommittee. Um, are there members seeking recognition for the purpose of asking questions on a second round? The gentleman from Michigan. Let, let me just ask uh, unanimous consent. Uh, we were originally going to have votes today and they, they canceled them uh, yesterday afternoon. So that's one of the reasons there's only four of us here. Uh, I might just ask that uh, all members of the subcommittee may have the opportunity to submit written questions. Uh, within the next week or so, and if you could respond in a timely basis, uh, I'm not sure what the chance Without is. objection, so what? We'll do, we'll do that. Thank you. Great. Other, other questions? The gentleman from Utah. I just had a couple more questions I didn't get a chance to ask. Ms. Doan, I wanted to ask, um, <coughs> one of the arguments made by Energy Solutions is the NRC has already issued import licenses to other companies and materi materials have been imported for several years. Has the NRC ever previously approved a license to allow for anything close to 20,000 tons of waste? from a foreign country? Um, no, not, to, not this volume of um, ultimate disposal. No. I saw the table you included with your, your testimony at the, at, the, at the end of your testimony, which lays out the volumes of what have been, uh, what have been allowed to come into this country. Um, I see five where the waste is ultimately disposed in this country. All the rest have been processed here and then returned back That's to right. the originating country, and all of them are quite small from my view in terms of the, the volume. The is that a fair statement? The volume, right. Okay. Um, last year when you testified for this committee, I, I expressed a concern about the lack of regulatory accountability for foreign generated waste. At the time, you indicated the NRC does not currently have the authority to prohibit the importation of nuclear waste as you just had the discussion I, with Mr. Gordon. I, I, can I, oh, you weren't here. Can was, I clarify that for yeah, the record? Sure. We, we absolutely have the authority to reject waste that would pose a health and safety issue, a common defense and security issue. Yes, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, that's I just, correct statement. The criteria you use to evaluate it that's right. are, are not whether it's foreign waste or not. It's, it's the, health, it's the right. issues you just That's read. right. Thank you. Um, we've also heard that the company believes that neither the state of Utah nor the Northwest Compact have the right to prohibit this material from coming to the United States. Um, and you still believe you lack the authority to prohibit the waste from coming to the United States based on simply where it comes from? You that's right. You can't, Just okay. based on its foreignness, that's right. So uh, it seems to me that no one has the authority to make the, the call on whether or not foreign waste should come from a regulatory standpoint. It's really, to reiterate what Mr. Gordon said, this is a policy issue about whether or not this country is going to allow this to happen. Well, and I, I won't speak for Mr. Slosky. I think the compacts believe that they do have the authority to keep waste out because of its foreignness. Right. So I won't, won't speak to him. And if they have control of a facility, as happened in with the Barnwell case, the very okay. first case, and they say waste can't come in, we would not have the third criterion met, which is that an appropriate facility right. has agreed to accept okay. the waste. Has the NRC done any additional work to determine national disposal capacity for low-level radioactive waste? Not, not the. We haven't actually done the studies now. Um, is that an agenda item that, that is being considered at NRC? Would it make sense to maybe make a decision about what our capacity is in terms of approving applications for waste? Um, I, I, th I probably shouldn't just hypothesize about that. But where capacity issues could raise a health and safety concern, then okay. yes, we look into them. But we look to the proper authorities that also make those decisions. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I'll get back. Can I just ask one follow-up question? Should the there? gentleman is recognized uh, for that Mr. purpose? Mr. Well, since you all approved the import license, right? I mean, you all, you all, you all, you all uh, gave the uh, the license to um, 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 this the facility in Clive. Do you actually check with the state? Uh, absolutely. Well, 
I, I'm not, we haven't approved the in, Italian. I, I know that's not what you mean. But okay, we haven't approved the Italian li import license. We have approved licenses in the past, and yes, we do check with and the And you host do states. check, that's part of the Absol checklist. To Absolutely. Check the host states, the compacts, yes. Okay. And our process is very public. We also publish all materials, and we do get comments from other compacts that might be um, also interested. Take all of that into consideration. Thank you. Uh, and uh, other other questions that the members have? The gentleman from Tennessee. Just one last quick question to Ms. Stone. Uh, does Energy Solutions uh, currently have pending import license applications to bring radioactive waste in from Brazil and uh, Mexico? Uh, there are two pending applications for Brazil and Mexico. I know one of them is Energy. The, the material will ultimately go to the Clive Utah site. I'm not but, sure they're their applications. Is that the same? So, so that Mexico and Brazil have also asked to be able to, to bring or to export to us uh, some radioactive waste that would wind up in Utah. Is that correct? App applicants in the United States have applied to get waste from, yes, Brazil and Mexico to ultimately have some material disposed of in Clive, Utah. Thank you. Gentlemen's time has expired. Other questions from members? Um, what we'll do then is we'll give each one of the witnesses one minute to um, summarize their position to the uh, committee will, in reverse order from the original statements, we'll begin with you, Mr. Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to set the record straight with respect to the contract issue, the company had signed a uh, memorandum of understanding, which I don't, as a lawyer, don't consider to be uh, the final uh, definitive agreement on these, <coughs> on these, uh, on the Italian arrangement. Uh, there is no license and there is no contract at this point in time, obviously. And I just so are you going to amend your uh, are you going to amend, amend your uh, submission to the NRC? No, the the submission to the NRC is accurate. The uh, the, the only other comment I want to make is that we have we have a legitimate business that uh, is lawful. It's highly regulated. We deal with these materials safely, and it's critical to the nuclear industry in the United States. The, the opportunity to handle a small amount of international waste gives us an opportunity to play on a global stage. What's at stake here is not just Italian waste to be disposed of in uh, Utah. Helping them solve a small part of their Class A low-level waste issues allows us to deal uh, with site selection and development in Italy and, and a lot of other technical areas. We're competing with other foreign companies to, uh, to participate as a, as a leader from America in the nuclear renaissance. And we have, as our secret sauce in uh, attempting to compete with other uh, world competitors, the ability to dispose of a small amount of their waste, and it's limited. Now, the 4.3 acres in a private site doesn't bar all of the other uh, compact facilities from excluding waste from their facilities. So there is a finite amount that would come into the United States. All the other compacts can exclude foreign waste uh, under the court's ruling and under the compact law. Gentlemen's time has expired. Uh, Mr. Slosky. Thank you. Uh, there's one uh, issue that came up that I would like to clarify, and I think there was an implication. Could you move that microphone in a little closer, please? There's one issue I'd like to clarify. Um, the implication was brought up that the compacts believe that they have the authority to control waste coming into the United States. Uh, that is not correct. The decision of whether waste comes into the United States is a federal decision currently resting with the NRC. The compacts have the authority to control whether it comes into their compact regions. That's, a, I think, a very important distinction. Um, the other issue that we've touched on but um, may not have been adequately focused on, and that is that there has been foreign waste brought in in the past. It's been recycled or processed, which is just fine. But the, the states are very concerned, the compacts are concerned in cases where that foreign waste gets reattributed and disposed of as domestic waste and its foreign origin gets obscured. 
the last thing I'd like to say is that the eight of the ten low level waste compacts representing 34 states are involved in the energy solutions um, litigation. And I think that's ample proof of the potential broad reaching implications of that lawsuit. Thank you, Mr. Slosky. And uh, Ms. Stone. Okay, thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you to, uh, this morning. And um, I think I just want to make sure that it's clear that the third criterion that we consider about whether an appropriate facility has agreed to take the waste considers the views of the compacts and where that decision is um, left to rest and, and there is not a, a facility, so not like the case here where there's um, uh, review going on. Um, we would take that into consideration and would not permit the waste to come in, and we have done so in the past. Um, we do understand the roles and actually have a very good working relationship with both the states and the compacts. We depend on um, their advice on issues that they have their uh, responsibility or they're responsible for. We depend on their advice and we do seek that out. And I also want to point out we have a very public process that takes a very deliberate and, and um, very considered view of all the technical safety, common defense and security issues that would come up with uh, these waste imports. Thank you, Ms. Doan. We thank each of our uh, witnesses very much. Uh, I ask that the members be given five business days to submit any questions for the record. Without objection, that will be uh, ordered. Um, again, we thank you. We welcome you back, Mr. Slosky. Good to see you again. See you in 25 more years. Uh, and um, I'll still be here. Um, uh, this uh, hearing is adjourned. Thank you. Next on C-SPAN, a briefing from the State Department. Wall Street Journal Opinion.